a rallying call against sex in poetry. And um, as I mentioned before, I'm really not one for titles. This is called Sex is Not a Poem. Though it's almost always the answer to some ill-formed analysis, poetry is truly about the sexiest flaccid paralysis. It's making me sick, positively tragic that when I get enthusiastic about forceful rhythms, people look at me weird and we're already talking about the iambic. It's depressing that these differing disciplines have now merged and twinned into a dizzy and dismal spin. Because I don't want to pen prose about heads and toes, not interested in the scratch and sniff of slapping skin, of getting beneath each other's packaging. To me, that's the opposite of tantalising. I prefer daydreaming and fantasising about you. And how we first met, you remember, it was the last train out the station on the last night of November. A midnight carriage and you needed a pen. I've been chewing it while staring as I passed it, we touched. Me apologising for the teeth marks again and again. Because right there, right there, no critic can interpret that first moment that we flirted. Or how the butterflies are inserted. And later, there'd be no subtext to the way you undressed. You can't have how we bedded, picked apart by some foreign academic, so no. Sex is not a poem. Forget intonation or personification, it's a formless mess of gratification. Infatuation leads to fornication and insemination. There's none of the beauty or extravaganza of a stanza, it's mostly just trying to work out where your hands are. So it's alliteration, not titillation. Enjoying the moment without enjambement, because that's what a bed is for, not to be used as silly metaphor. Today it seems a sin to be without a sexual simile, so no, sex is not a poem. Neither is it a villanelle or a haiku, it could be a quiet afternoon or a typhoon or a sonnet that reaches its twelve lines a little too soon. It happens to more poems than you would think. So, <laughs> um, bad sex is a good poem. It's easy to understand and often underhand. But good sex is a bad poem. It's wordless, with references that only two people can truly understand. Thank you.